So maybe very much to your surprise, I will mainly not speak about uh, Iraq and our work in, uh, in that country, but rather on uh, museums. Public museums are a cultural concept developed circa 250 years ago. The idea to make public the formerly private collections, mainly of the kings or noble private persons, first was developed in Great Britain and France, then Italy, Russia, and Germany. The special focus on national museums is strongly connected to the creation of modern nations in the course of the 19th century. National museums presented the treasures of a nation and by presenting artifacts from foreign cultures in addition, and, do, uh, um, and they documented the political interests and power plays of the time. The interest as well as the presentation of the capacity to own, to document, to decipher, or to scholarly link the cultures of the others to the own one was a power play in itself. So collections of beautiful, precious, strange, or scientifically important historical objects were brought back home and presented to the curious public. Napoleon's expedition to Egypt was both a military and a campaign of scientific curiousness and self-presentation. The British Museum already in the first half of the 19th century presented Assyrian art to the public, means artifacts coming from Mesopotamia, today's Iraq. Monuments like the Egyptian obelisks uh, were re-erected in the growing capitals of that time and structured the modern urban setting by proudly presenting them. During the end of the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire followed to present itself as a modern and powerful nation through the installation of a national museum in Istanbul. When World War I ended and the following years of wars in the Middle East led to several new states such as modern Turkey, Iraq, Syria or Palestine, nation building became an important issue in that region as well. Under the mandate of France in Syria and Lebanon, national museums were founded in Beirut and Damascus. And under the mandate of Great Britain, the same took place in Baghdad in 1926. These museums, mainly collecting and presenting archaeological artifacts from all over the respective countries, were meant to preserve and to present the glorious past of the new nations, usually by skipping more recent centuries and very much focusing on pre-Islamic periods. This idea of national museums has an impact until today. Not only are these museums still the main museums of the respective countries, presenting the best of the best of objects, they are the treasure halls of the capitals, serve as a focal point for politicians, for instance, when hosting guests, and usually are the major point of interest for tourists. In addition, they are connected to the National Antiquities Department, de departments, means to those administrative bodies that handle all archaeological and historical remains of the countries. All objects have to be delivered there, will be documented and registered there, and either will be stored completely in the magazines of the national museums, or, as it is the case in Syria and Iraq, can be distributed to regional museums following the educational concepts developed by the departments of antiquities. This very centralized system has the consequence that either only in the capital or sometimes in major regional centers, people will be able to see the movable remains of the history. In Iraq, for instance, it was the rule until 2003 that the National Museum would send some objects on loan to region, regional museums. According to the education concept, these were objects from all periods and all regions of Iraq, by this explaining the historical development and contribution to mankind of all Iraq, but explicitly not the regional peculiarities. For administrative purposes, as well as under the aspects of security, of professional documentation and preservation of the object, 
objects, this centralized system is of course perfect and allows for effective handling, at least as long as the magazines are not too jam-packed. The centralization of cultural heritage, however, has severe um, impact on the approach of the normal inhabitant of a country. From three decennials of excavation experience in Iraq and Lebanon, I learned how interested people, even in the smallest village, are to understand what we are doing, why archaeological excavations are carried out, why this matters for the region and especially for the local people. One major question usually is what this might contribute to the personal traditions and origin. As soon as we invest into in the involvement of local people, such as extensive information to our workmen and site guards, or in storytelling in the neighborhood, not to forget in answering questions to the children, the reaction is sympathy and pride about what can be found in the home region and how it contributed to history. A recent example in Baalbek, where I am working um, uh, as well, in Lebanon, um, is we uh, found there last year another huge stone block in the Roman quarry. Known were blocks of two, 20 meter length and four by four meter section that weigh uh, around uh, 1,000 tons. Now, an even larger stone from the same period was found fully preserved in the quarry that uh, weighs at least 1,600 tons. Of course, superlatives are attractive. In this case, literally half of the town and people from all social and religious groups came along. Not to only um, have a look on this superlative, but to discuss how this block was moved in the time of the Roman Empire and how the people of the town contributed. Another example are the information panels and leaflets, for instance, uh, that the uh, Cairo department of our, of our institutes produces, produced in Arabic, especially addressing the neighborhood of excavation sites. But usually archaeology or the random finding of objects for the local people is connected to governmental power, to police, security offices, and secret service, institutions that collect these objects and store them away in the National Museum. In many cases it, cases it is, in addition, connected to the activities of cr criminal persons and mafia-like entities being active in the looting and illegal selling of artifacts. So, under norm normal circumstances, the topic is connected negatively and contributes to the feeling that the governmental institutions act against the local societies. In case uh, a political system disappears, like the Saddam regime in 2003 or the Mubarak regime in Egypt in 2011, people act against the governmental institutions and, among other actions, destroy or loot the museums. It is therefore no wonder that, for instance, uh, with the a progressing federalization of Iraq, more and more regional and even local museums are founded. Since long, the German Archaeological Institute, um, most of its depart departments are based in its host countries or, um, and uh, are focusing on excavation and conservation projects. Um, so the German Archaeological Institute, in collaboration with uh, its local partners, invests into the involvement of local entities and in the same time in the professional commitment of local scholars, members of departments of antiquities and museums. This is not only, this not only is organized through the involvement of, of local staff into our excavations and research projects, but also in the advanced training of young scholars and technical staff, such as excavation technicians, conservators of archaeological monuments and artifacts, or in the development of school materials. These trainings are organized in short to mid-term programs that preferably take place in our host countries, or as is uh, in the case of Iraq, for the time being at least, in summer programs in Berlin. 
Some of them are connected to international institutions and uh, training courses taking place in all uh, Near Eastern countries. Topics are usually advanced methods and techniques of documentation, preservation, and theoretical background, learning by doing, and all aspects of scientific approaches. All programs, for the time being, are kept low level and often take place without public announcement. The, the main reason is the safety of our young trainees who come from a country or from regions um, where highlighting contacts to foreign missions too publicly might endanger their lives. In addition, we invest into the digitization of our documentation we co uh, collected through decennials of archaeological research, such as maps, plans, photographs, written documentation, uh, for instance, in the so-called Syrian Heritage Project, carried out in cooperation with the Museum of Islamic Art in Berlin and with the support of the German Foreign Office, or in other cases, the digital documentation of monuments and objects. By this, much easier than in the past, information can, can be duplicated and shared with professionals. And in cases of total destruction, at least the detailed documentation with high probability will survive. All sectors, involvement of locals, investment into local information measures, training of young scholars in the digitiz digitization projects need to be extended. We need to enhance the commitment of all, for, as, for instance, UNESCO is promoting since long. Only with a widespread education, not only in the fields of archaeology and history, we will be able to preserve the rich diversity of cultures and the cultural heritage of our world. Thank you very much.